What you guys got another video here for you on how to install Windows 11 without an internet connection and we're going to be doing the full setup here for everyone whether you want to customize it or whether you just want a clean install this video is for you. So you can see here we've got numerous different ways of going about installing Windows and we'll go through it all in this video. So first off if you are looking to install Windows 11 on unsupported hardware or you just want to create a nice clean operating system then using something like Rufus is going to be very useful to you. I'll go through and quickly explain here once you've got these settings set up what you see on the screen right here click start and this is where you can choose whether you want to remove required 4 gigabyte plus RAM, secure boot and TPM 2.0. You can also remove the requirements for online Microsoft account and you can create your own local account with your own name right here. You can disable all the data collection and also disable BitLocker. Rufus can be used just for a clean install or if you want to use it on unsupported hardware. If you prefer to use Microsoft's tool, you can use the media creation tool here and basically download it and set it up. It's going to give you a bootable USB flash drive with Windows 11 on it and basically allow you to install Windows 11 like I'm showing you right here. Pretty straightforward and easy to do. Just go through the motions here like I'm doing on the screen and it will create a bootable USB flash drive for you. This is not going to have any sort of tweaks or anything like that on there but if you want just a clean Windows install from Microsoft then this is what method you would be using. And once done, it should look something like this on your USB flash drive if you've used the Microsoft method. You can see an auto unattended .xml file. This is if you want to add all of the tweaks and disable a lot of the Microsoft telemetry. I'm not going to be using that method in this video. I've made videos on that before and you can download it from uh, Memory's website. I'll leave a link for that in the video description. Also, you might want to create a folder for your drivers. You can put a folder in there. You can get your motherboard manufacturer's name from the system information and head over to their website and download all of the drivers like LAN, wireless, chipset and stuff like that and put them all into that driver's folder. Once you've extracted them all, it should look something like this. And we'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later on in the video. But first, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Sales. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 11 Pro OEM key or cheap Windows 10 Pro OEM key, check out the links in the video description. Use my promo code capital B capital R 09 and apply that to your order and get a 30% discount on all your purchases. Once you submit your order, they will then send you your key. You can use that key to activate your version of Windows, just like you see on the screen right now. Anyway, let's get back and cover the clean install of Windows 11. So I'm going to boot up to my USB flash drive. I've got the internet disabled and I've also using just the Microsoft media creation tool method. But if you're using Rufus and you've also got the auto unattended .xml file, you don't have to worry about this part. But we're just using the stock clean install method from Microsoft's media creation tool. So I'm going to be changing the time and currency format here to English world. This can be changed back once we're at the desktop and this will stop any uh, default pre-installed apps being installed on to the computer. This is a quick and easy method and you don't need to use any third party apps and things like that. So what we're going to do here is leave this as is and we're going to go ahead then choose our keyboard layout. Choose the country of your choice. If you live in the EU you're going to be able to uninstall Microsoft Edge because that is part of the terms and agreements that they have with the EU. If you live in the UK or anywhere else in the world, unfortunately, you're going to be stuck with uh, Microsoft Edge and they don't allow you to uninstall it. And you have to use uh, third party methods to be able to do that. So again, we've got our installation set up right here. I'm going to agree to these terms and leave it to install Windows. If you have a product key, and you've purchased the product key, you can enter the product key right here. If you don't have one, you could just say, I don't have one, because your system might be already pre-activated during the installation process. Here, I'm going to be installing Windows 11 Home, but make sure you select the correct version for your product. So for instance, if you have a Windows 11 Pro key, make sure you're installing Windows 11 Pro. It's pretty self-explanatory. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Windows 11 Home here, Remember, we don't have any internet access right now, but don't worry, I'll show you how to get past that a little bit later on. You can accept their terms and conditions right here, and this will start the installation process. From here, 
it's going to search for some disks. Now you can either partition your drive out now, or you can do that later on at the desktop. If you have any network drivers that you want to add in, you can load driver right here and add your network driver in. This way, it will make sure you've got internet during the installation process. I'm going to use the whole drive and click next, and it starts to install Windows 11. I'll speed this process up to not to bore you to tears. And once it will get to this stage right here, you can push Shift F10 at this stage. But what we'll do is I'll show you what happens. We do get to this stage where it says something went wrong. That's okay. We're going to skip this part right here. And again, you've got your keyboard layout and you can choose a keyboard layout and stuff like that. But it doesn't really matter because we're going to have to bypass all of this because it won't let you go past without setting up a Microsoft account like this. You can see that it says, let's connect you to the network. We don't want to do that because if you do that, it's going to ask you to basically create a Microsoft account. So press Shift F10. And what you need to do is type out OOBE backslash bypass NRO, just like you see on the screen, and then push Enter. This is going to restart your computer, which is pretty normal. And it's going to ask you to go through a bunch of the similar things that you did just a minute ago. So basically, all you need to do here is let the system restart. And once the system starts to restart, it's going to take us back to where we was before. But the difference is it's going to allow us to continue without an internet connection. So what we need to do here is let the system boot up. We still don't have internet connection right here. You're going to see the same window popping up right here. It's now going to say something went wrong. That might take a while before it populates to that screen. Don't worry about that. Just be patient. Now you can choose your language for one last time. Skip this second part. And then you can see right here, it says, I don't have internet. Make sure you click on that right there. And this will allow you to bypass it and create a local account like we're going to do right here. So give your account a username and a password, whatever you want to use. So let's go ahead and put a username in. I'm going to skip the password. I don't need one. And again, this is where you've got the option to turn off all of this stuff right here. So this is all the telemetry and advertising stuff and location. If you want your location being recognized, then leave that enabled. But I've just turned all that stuff off. From here, this is the final part of the installation. So I'll speed this up. And there we are. We're at the desktop. We still don't have any internet right here. So you can see uh, the internet is still off and I need to be able to turn that back on. So let me plug in the cable again. And now you'll see the uh, actual start menu populate here. And you can already see there is a lot of stuff missing. And that's because we used English World. So this is probably the easiest method for people to follow. Just create a, a bootable USB flash drive with the media creation tool or Rufus or any other method if you want to. And you can see right here now that we already have quite a clean system. We still need to do some setup here. And I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. So now what I'd advise you to do is remove and uninstall all of the other bloat that you don't need, like Copilot and things like that. This is a choice thing, whether you use any of this stuff. Just go through and uninstall what you don't want. If you don't want anything to do with Microsoft apps, then remove all of them and use third party apps if you want to, if you feel that strongly about it. If you live in the EU, you can uninstall Microsoft Edge. Before you uninstall it, make sure that you have an executable file into your USB flash drive for that browser. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to browse the Internet. So from here, this is pretty much what we've got. I've got one more thing here. And I can do that inside Winget. So I'm going to get Winget list up. And what we're going to do is remove the ones that we can't uninstall that I don't want on the PC. For instance, we can just remove, uh, say, for instance, the phone link. Or we can remove other ones like Game Bar and things like that if we don't want them. So what you need to do here is type Winget space uninstall. And then you can put the speech marks in with the name of the app that you want to uninstall. And it will go ahead and uninstall those apps. So just remove all of the ones that didn't allow you to uninstall and use this method. And they should be all gone from the computer. You can use your cursor arrow keys to bring up the previous command and just delete the end part. This way, you don't need to use any auto unattended scripts and things like that. 
uh, you can just do it yourself. It's very straightforward and easy to do. If you are using the auto unattended .xml file, it will remove all of this stuff, but this gives you more control over what you want to remove and what you want to keep, in my personal opinion. You don't have to configure or go into the options and hash out stuff to make sure it's keeping it. Otherwise, it will just remove a bunch of stuff and some of the stuff you might want to keep on your PC, but unfortunately, it's just going to remove it all. So this method gives you more control. So what I'll do is I'll just finish off the rest of these and we move on to the next step. Now, because we use the English world method, we need to put this back to our country that we uh, live in. So rather than have English world, we're going to go back into the start button here, click control panel, and what we're going to do is go to Clockham uh, region right here. And this is the area you should be seeing. So click on there. And from there, what we need to do is go into region right here and change this to the from the English world to English United Kingdom. Or wherever you are in the world, you can put your particular uh, country in right here. So I'm going to go ahead and find that right here. And we can go ahead and change that. Once this changed, we're pretty much good to move on to the next step. And that is to make a couple of changes to the taskbar. And we should be getting to where we need to be. So I'm going to quickly apply and OK that right there. And you can already see it doesn't take that long to get up and running. And you don't need any complex stuff. So I've turned off a lot of stuff right now, as you can see. And uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on the taskbar settings right here. And I'm going to turn off all of this stuff right here, widgets, task view. And we're going to change the search icon to uh, the rather than search box, we're going to have the search icon only. And this will just give us a little icon. You can turn that off completely if you don't use it. I would use it myself. But there we are. It's looking a lot cleaner. I would then change the start menu to start 11 at this stage, but I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. So I'm going to just turn all those off here and we're going to use something simple like O and O shut up 10 plus, and this is going to make a lot of changes to the computer and turn off a lot of the telemetry and advertising and things like that. So I'm going to go up to actions and you can see right here, we can use either the green, the yellow or the red. I would use say for instance for safe green, but I'm going to go for the yellow method but there is a couple of changes that you're going to need to do. And you can see it's done 204 settings, very quick and easy, and it's completely reversible. You don't have to go into group policy. If you do have a pro version, I would just drop my policy backups that I've got, and it will change all those, and it will be more than 204. It will be completely customizing the system. If you're using the auto unattended uh, XML file, again, this will make major changes to the system as well. Make sure you're toggling back off the uh, access to camera and microphone if you use your webcam and your microphone, otherwise you won't be able to use it. You can do that for current user and also local machine if you want to. And again, this will give you access to your camera, web camera and your microphone. If you leave these on the yellow settings, it's going to completely disable those and you won't be able to use your microphone or camera. So just do that. Once you've done that, restart the PC. For the very last time and you can then do all of your windows updates and basically you should be good to go if you have any sort of drivers in your drivers folder you can go ahead and install all of your drivers and then start going off and getting all of your apps it's already looking very very clean as you can see right here and again it's as simple as that it's not that difficult uh, people make it more complicated than it needs to be you can do all this, all of this without any sort of software and scripts and things like that. It's pretty straightforward, as you can see right here. We've only used one bit of software, which is Shut Up 10, and you should be pretty much good to go. This is just one way of doing things. There's quite a few ways of going about getting to the same uh, place where you are. Some people like to tweak even further. Again, you don't really need to. This is probably about as far as you need to go and you should be having a better experience with Windows 11. Again, I would change the start menu with Start 11, but I try to keep it as simple as possible because people will just use the operating system for what it is, and it's pretty much good to go from right here. But again, you use whatever method you want out of all of those. You can use which one you want to use on your installation. Anyway, with that said, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. 
A quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. I shall see you in the very next video or I'll catch you on our new Discord server. The link is in the video description if you fancy a chat. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.